Welcome to Chat Chow, a weekly show where we interview the personalities behind Florida's food industry. On this week's episode, we'll be speaking to Lalo Durazo, partner of Peacock Garden, Jaguar, and Talavera. Well, you're drinking a basil lemonade made with fresh lemons, fresh basil, just a little sugar, water, and club soda. It's great. I think the basil gives it a great flavor. Exactly. Love it. And, and I'm yours? drinking a white wine sangria with apples, chopped apples, and uh, also a little bit of fresh basil. And uh, we put also a little shot of rum and, and uh, triple sec, so it has a, not, not triple sec, triple sec. Sex. <laughs> not sex. Not sex. Sex. Uh, sorry about that. And, Don't worry. And uh, chopped apples, basil, white wine sangria. We put triple sec and brandy. So it gets, brandy. has a very nice kick that we need early in the morning on Saturday. Everybody needs it early in oh, the yeah. morning, right? Especially Saturday. It's to start off your day. Before I get into your background, um, a little bit about you, I wanted to talk about the space and I Correct. wanted you to describe to the Chat Chow viewers this space because the first time I came here, I felt like I had discovered a secret hidden yeah, yeah. treasure, like yeah. this was my private garden. So yeah. describe the, the space for us. Well, I think the, the one there's two parts of the space. One is the actual physical uh, space that it's a beautiful garden that we brought in. It was not here. Okay. It was nothing here. Here when we got the location, it was just bricks and the fence in the back. Wow. And uh, but the, the vision that we had is let's create this amazing outdoor garden that you know I think is needed in Coconut Grove because with the beautiful weather we have almost eight ten months out of a the year there's not really a beautiful space that you can be outside. But the other part was that when we start envisioning this garden, we see that we have a grave at the front. And the grave at the front is the, is the oldest marked grave in the county. Wow. And is the wife of Commodore Ralph Monroe uh, that died in, of tuberculosis here like in 1880, some, sometime around that. This territory is really where Miami started. It was the first community that got organized right. as a community was here. here. And uh, at that time, I gave a call to Arvar Moore Parks, who is one of the best historians in, in the area and in, in, in uh, Florida. And uh, I tell her about this project and I say, you know, we're going to do the garden, but I think we should also include the part of the history because it's, it's a very, very important part of Miami. If you go inside, you see, you know, every, every photograph has a little explanation of who those people are and, and why were they here, when did they come, and how everything came together. And this became like the first little community in all Southern Florida. So first was Coconut Grove, uh, and then came Miami. So what is your background, um, and how did you get started into this? We were talking beforehand, you yeah. mentioned you're from Mexico City. From Mexico City. I City. pegged you as an Italian, I was so wrong, <laughs> but that's okay. So what brought you here, I, and how did you get started? Uh, well, it's a long story. Uh, but I'll try to make it short. Short. Uh, <laughs> I got started in the business because I always wanted to be in this business since I was very, very young, maybe 10, 11 years old, uh, because I love cooking. I, I really enjoy cooking and uh, I've been doing it for 36 or 37 years already. And I still wake up and I enjoy very much what I do. As soon as I put a foot on, on that restaurant, I said, you know, this is it. I'm not going anywhere else. And I stay there for for many, many years. And I, well, I never left the restaurants. So I started there and then uh, in Mexico City, then I went to Acapulco. Uh, and we also, because with a the group, there were two, I went to open a new place there. Right. And coincidentally, it's very funny. I have the picture here, I'll show you. But the first restaurant I opened with my mentor, Carlos Anderson, in 1976, I was 19 years old. Wow. In Acapulco, we called it Coconut Grove. And here you are. <laughs> here I am. <laughs> I never knew I was going to end up here. And this is really a place that I I came here and I don't want to leave. I really love, love it much to grow. And you have three restaurants. You, ha you yes. have Jaguar, Jaguar and Talavera, Talavera in Coral and, Gables, and, and Peacock, and Peacock Garden. Garden. Yes, yeah. um, now explain um, your 
Let's talk about maybe your some of your favorite dishes at these ah, restaurants. Okay. People love to hear about the food. What I like about Pico Garden is the simplicity, uh, the freshness, and the flavors. Okay. Uh, considering the garden and considering the history, we decided that the best dishes and menu that will fit in with this space that we created was uh, very simple, fresh, uh, but very delicious food. And also connected to somehow the roots of the, of, of, uh, the space. For example, we have the Charles Frau fish chowder uh, every Sunday. And it's a recipe that we got you know, from a client that came in and that he had in the drawer for I don't know how many years, Mr. Duncan. We appreciate his, his <laughs> contribution. Thank you, Mr. And, Duncan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, it's a recipe of the chief commodore of the Coconut Grove Sailing Club for, I don't know, for how many years back. Wow. And they had, uh, I think, like a, a chowder contest every so often, and they'll try all these chowders, and I think his was like the favorite recipe. So we have that, for, for that, that recipe every Sunday. The, the item I like, the most is the grill at the garden. We call it the grill at the garden, the which the garden. you choose the protein that you want from salmon, tuna, mahi, chicken breast, uh, uh, half chicken, or I mean whole chicken deboned, uh, saute, roasted. Uh, we have also shrimps, we have uh, filet mignon, we have all these different yes. proteins that are grilled. We put a little Italian salsa verde on the top with parsley, lemon, nice. caper, olive, garlic. Uh, and we serve it with your choice of salad. What do you think, since you have three restaurants and you've had this big, huge past that you went through with us, your history, what do you think the key to your success is? I mean, I'd probably say you're charismatic, but no. what, what do you think your key, I think, <laughs> the key uh, to success is? There are too many, there are, in this business, there are way too many things that come into play in order to be able to have a place, a restaurant that does well right. for many years of because course. that's that's uh, the vision is create a place that's gonna last. You know, I want uh, I would like my restaurants to be here, you know, ten or fifteen or twenty years, and still look fresh, right. still be updated with the, the tastes and preferences of people at, at that time, uh, still be excited about what I do. So you know, to to achieve that, it, there's I cannot put it in in in, in a few words uh, once you have the formula that you know what because there's two parts one is creating the formula of each restaurant how is this going to operate under which parameters and and, and, and procedures and, and like everything right. menu and everything right and once you have that defined which is like the startup stage before you open the doors this is important before you open the doors the decisions you make before you open the doors to business are the ones that are gonna dictate whether you're gonna succeed or you're gonna fail. Is once you open, yeah, it's done. Yeah. You know, to change things once you open is major problem. If you have to change directions on a on, on a concept once you open, once you're already open, that's bad news. Cheers to success and your secret formula. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers to you. Thank you. And the same to you.